Hello, my name is Nicole Kasman Gonzalez, and I'm an occupational therapist here at Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Charlene, who is a physical therapist, and I will be reviewing tips on how to exercise your mind and body. I will first address tips on how to exercise your mind, and then Charlene will discuss tips on how to exercise your body. As an occupational therapist, I work with individuals that may have memory, problem solving, and safety awareness challenges. I also work closely with caregivers and family members to address these challenges. Since I work with people and improving their cognition, let's play a fun game to see how well your short-term memory is working be before we begin the talk. I want you to try your best to remember these words. Ice cream, balloons, pizza, party, presents, and dress up. Don't worry, you're not gonna be graded on this. Keep them in your mind and we will get back to them later. So what are the benefits of keeping your mind active? Keeping your mind active gives you more energy throughout the day. It orients you to what is going on in the environment. You know your current events, you know the date, you know the year. It also improves your memory and it improves your overall mental and physical health. So what are some cognitive challenges that you or your caregiver may notice? Impaired memory may be one challenge, so you might forget to take your medications, forgot that you ate a meal, you might forget to go to a doctor's appointment. Impaired attention and organization may look like someone who is easily distracted, you may have a poor concentration, concentration or difficulty completing two tasks at the same time. The challenge of impaired problem solving means the inability to apply learned skills to a new situation. So for example, if you're an avid baker and for, you're preparing a routine recipe, for some reason this task is now difficult to you. Lastly, impaired safety awareness may display itself as forgetting to call 911 in an emergency or trying to get out of bed when one side of your body is weak. So what can you do if you or a family member has impaired memory? If you know you have a hard time recalling information, or if your loved ones have memory challenges, you can write a to-do list, you can have a chore list. Um, I really like post-it notes or using um, a Blackberry or your cell phone to set off reminders for important <coughs> appointments. Also, calendars are a great tool um, to post on your ref refrigerator or a commonplace in your house to remember important appointments. It can also be a good tip to coordinate taking your medications either before or after meals because this association may be helpful um, to remember taking your medications. So what can you do if your family member or you has impaired attention or organization? If you have a hard time, really try and limit your distractions and keep your environment clutter free. So if you're paying bills, try and keep your table free of distractions and extra, pap extra paper. If you're trying to compose an email, you might want to turn your radio or TV lower to limit distractions so you're able to focus. If your fam family member has organizational or attention challenges, keep this in mind um, when you're asking them to complete a task in a disorganized or noisy environment. Caregivers can cue their loved ones during tasks like cooking, um, cleaning, laundry, by asking them what steps of the activity they're on just to get them back on task. They can cue them to say what needs to be done right now. The key is to take a mental break when you are fatigued or overwhelmed and for caregivers to recognize when their loved ones need a break. So what can you do if your family member has poor problem solving? It's really good to simplify your tasks, break down the steps. So you want to perform tasks that you're confident in and you know that you, have, that you will have a positive outcome. Caregivers can provide their loved ones with picture cards to lay out the steps of a task, such as how to perform the laundry. And if you yourself have difficulties with problem solving, you can set up step-by-step -step instructions. Also, if you do have a caregiver, they can allow you to perform the steps of placing the laundry um, with them. So you might do one part of it and they might do the other part. Caregivers can also cue their loved ones by asking them, does this seem right to you? Do you need to add the clothes before or after you turn the machine on to allow their loved ones to 
problem solve actively in the process. Caregivers should really actively encourage their loved ones to ask for help and ask questions if they are unsure of how to complete a task. If you are having a hard time with problem solving um, routine tasks, feel empowered to ask for assistance so you're confident with the end results. So what can you do if you or your family member has poor safety awareness or poor judgment? So if a caregiver is aware that their loved ones has challenges with their safety awareness or judgment, leave reminders over the sink to turn the sink off, or leave a post-it note over the stove to turn the stove off after cooking. Caregivers or yourself can leave um, post-its or signs over the phone for emergency phone numbers, such as the police or the ambulance, or you could even set up speed dial numbers in your cell phone. If a caregiver and a loved one are cooking a meal together, um, cues like um, turn the heat down on the stove is a good cue or being careful when using a knife to cut food. What I really wanted to give everybody here is a list of recommended activities to exercise your mind. All of these activities can work on various challenges that you or your loved one is, or loved one is encountering. For example, crossword puzzles, card games, um, Sudoku, composing emails, they all work on problem solving, um, they work on attention span and organizational skills. Breaking down the task is a good key just so you don't become overwhelmed with um, too much information at once. They have a lot of memory games, um, handheld computer games right now and video games that work on memory and problem solving as well. I really like the use of a calendar, just to post on your refrigerator to list important dates or appointments. Um, money management and check writing can be a good exercise to practice problem solving. And I really like um, creating chore lists or daily routines just so everybody can see what they need to do for the day, what they have done so they feel like they've accomplished something. Another good activity to participate in is reading and repeating a story in a magazine or a newspaper that you really enjoy so it doesn't seem like work and this can work on your memory. But really, the best recommendation I can give you is to use your downtime to practice exercising your mind. So bring your crossword puzzles, your Sudoku puzzles, your handheld games, um, to your doctor's appointments while you're commuting, while you're watching TV during commercials. This is a great time to exercise your mind. Um, so. After I spoke about these recommended activities, let's see which words you remembered. <laughs> so these were the words. A couple of suggestions that may be helpful to recall a list like this are relating words to each other. So these words all have to deal with like a celebration or a party. Three of the words start with the letter P. So it's nice to notice um, different relationships between words you're trying to recall. You also want to use these similar strategies during real life situations to recall doctor's appointments or participating in chores for the day. I am now going to hand over the presentation to Charlene, who will be giving you some great tips on exercising your body. Hi, good afternoon. As Nicole said, my name is Charlene Tui. I'm a physical therapist here in the rehabilitation department, and we're going to shift gears to um, exercising your body. So, most people have a general idea that exercise is good for them, and that is a correct assumption. The benefits include an extensive list, much more that is listed here, of physiological, emotional, and mental health benefits. Um, but I'm just going to discuss a few that are pertinent to this audience. Generally speaking, exercise is safe and well tolerated during and after treatments for cancer, including chemotherapy and radiation. Not only is it well tolerated, but it's recommended by almost all physicians and healthcare professionals. In some situations, precautions need to be um, observed when determining an exercise program, but first we're just going to talk about the benefits and I'll get to the precautions in a few slides. Cancer survivors report ongoing fatigue as the number one complaint or side effect from cancer treatment. It has been shown that even moderate amounts of activity, 10 minutes every other day, is sufficient in reducing fatigue. And in general, exercise programs do combat this side effect quite effectively. 
Exercise can help you with your mobility tasks on a daily basis. So if you have trouble getting in and out of bed, trouble getting up and down from a chair, climbing stairs to and from a subway, or return to work activities, exercise will help your ability to do all of these activities and maintain your fitness level. Um, another um, side, or another benefit of exercise we all know is um, preventing weight gain or combating weight gain. An unwanted side effect from steroid use is weight gain. So we highly recommend exercise to help combat, um, maybe when you're finished steroids, you still have some leftover pounds on you that you want to lose, and exercise is a great way to help combat that. Another unwanted side effect of steroids, which is commonly prescribed for patients during cancer treatment is decreased bone density. Um, studies show that you can lose up to 8% of your bone density in the first year of taking prescribed steroids. But uh, the same study shows that um, if you exercise, you only lose 2% of your bone density. So that's a really um, big difference, and it's really important that you do weight-bearing exercises to help improve your bone density after steroid use, and just in general, it's a good thing to do. Um, exercise can help to reduce anxiety and depression. It can help improve your sleeping patterns, and it certainly can improve your body image and self-esteem. Oftentimes, when you feel weak, um, it's, you, you don't feel good about yourself. So once you exercise and you start to gain some strength back, you start to feel a lot better about yourself. So I just want to highlight some key points about exercise. You can improve or maintain your fitness level during and after treatments for cancer. Exercise does not need to be difficult or cause discomfort. Um, if an exercise session seems too overwhelming or just too daunting, you can break it into small periods or intervals throughout the day, and that's still effective. Exercise will help to improve and maintain your mobility levels and your ability to complete your activities of daily living, showering, grooming, and can help people return to work if that's a goal for them. Um, and there's a lot of research being performed right now to help us further understand the benefits of exercise for patients um, who are survivors of cancer treatments and cancer. So it's common to make excuses as to why you can't exercise. Even people that haven't faced the challenges that you or your loved ones have faced come up with many excuses. I'm working late, I have errands to run, and my favorite excuse is I'm just too tired. So didn't I just say that exercise actually helps combat fatigue? Um, so that's true. So I'm suggesting there's no time like the present. You can start exercising today or maybe tomorrow. <laughs> um, I, want to recommend that you choose a, um, a period in the day that you have a higher energy level. So some people are morning people, some people are night owls, so you just want to exercise accordingly in your day. As Nicole suggested, waiting for appointments, during commercial breaks, any downtime in your day is a great time to exercise. People think of maybe hitting the gym. You can sit in a chair and march in place. You can move your arms in a bicycle motion for five minutes. You're going to start to feel that. So there's all kinds of activities that you can do in a chair. You could just stand up and walk around, walk up and down a hallway at the hospital while you're waiting for your doctor's appointment. So there's a lot of different things that you can do to incorporate exercise and activity into your day. And finally, um, I just want to say that sometimes when you feel your worst, maybe you feel lazy, you feel just down in the dumps, you just feel crummy, that's actually a really great time to begin exercising because some of those benefits of exercise are to improve your mood and to improve how you're feeling. So that's also a good time to start. So you want to begin exercise um, realistically. If your goal is to exercise 30 minutes a day and you've never exercised, you're probably going to struggle to hit a 30-minute exercise session. So you want to start in small periods, maybe three to five minutes a day. This way, if you achieve your three to five minutes, you feel good about yourself and you'll be more motivated to continue exercising. But if you set 30 minutes and you don't achieve it, you might be discouraged and you might think that you can't do it so that you won't continue with the program. Um, you want to make sure you have plenty of water and that you've eaten before you exercise, although you should wait 30 minutes after a meal to begin your exercise session. 
You do want to choose safe activities. So for example, if you have trouble with your balance or your coordination, it would be better to ride a stationary bike than to ride a road bike or a mountain bike. If you um, choose to participate in a walking program, you would probably want to walk on a treadmill where you have handles to hold on to versus walking down a city block where you have to combat a lot of people and traffic and crossing streets, things like that. Um, and I do want to stress that if you have physical challenges, you can exercise. Exercise can be modified to be done in a bed, on a mat, on the floor, in a chair, and all the way up to being outside and running and going to a gym. So um, what we recommend is that you Consult a physical or occupational therapist if you do have a challenge, so maybe one side is weak or you have an arm or a leg that doesn't move on its own, you can get um, advice on a, an exercise program that's appropriate for, for your activity and fitness level. So again, I'm just reminding you to be realistic um, with your goals. You should set attainable goals. You need to modify exercise based on the demands of your day. So if you have a very busy day full of a lot of appointments or you had a long day at work, you might not exercise as much on that day. You're probably getting plenty of exercise on those days. But days that you don't have as many things to do are excellent days to exercise and increase the activity level. Um, if you haven't exercised for a couple of days, you might want to check in with yourself and see why. Are you just becoming unmotivated? If that's the case, you want to make a contract maybe with a friend or a family member where you have to report your exercise session to them. Um, getting a buddy to exercise with you is a great way to be motivated and you're kind of accountable to somebody so it increases your, um, your motivation. Um, you do want to keep exercise a top priority, just as taking medication is a top priority, so is exercise. In fact, exercise can help eliminate some medications, for example, for blood pressure, or for cholesterol. So you definitely, it's really just as important as any medication that you're taking. And if you're feeling worse than usual and that's not why you're exercising, I encourage you to consult your physician just to check in, make sure everything's okay, and if something does change, and you can't exercise to the level you previously had, you can consult a physical or occupational therapist who will help you design a program appropriate for you with your new modifications. I just wanted to give some ideas or tips to increase your activity. Pedometers are great. They're small um, devices that you can wear on your belt and it counts the amount of steps you take in a day. So you could wear a pedometer to get an idea of how many steps you're taking and then increase your steps as a goal from there. And that's just walking. But if you increase your steps, that's more activity and you're burning calories. Um, and they're fairly inexpensive. You can get them at any sporting goods store and probably Target or Walmart. Um, Maybe when you drive to the store, instead of looking for that closest parking spot, you can park all the way at the end of the lot and walk further. Um, housework is a great way to get exercise. I sweat when I vacuum or scrub the bathroom, so you're definitely burning calories and getting exercise that way. You can wash your car. You can choose to take stairs instead of an elevator. Um, you could go dancing with a friend, or you can just put on your favorite CD at home, turn it up, and dance around your living room. Um, there's plenty of exercise videos, DVDs, and cable network TV that have exercise programs. And the Wii or the Wii Fit has become a very popular um, item for incorporating exercise and having fun at the same time. So just a few guidelines. It is appropriate to avoid exercise if you have a fever over 100 degrees, for early stages of active infections, for uncontrolled pain or nausea above baseline. Um, if you're dizzy or feeling unstable on your feet, again, more so than baseline, then you, can, um, you should call your physician. If you have difficulty breathing, chest pain, or an irregular heart rate, or if your platelets are less than 20,000. Um, and all of these conditions, you know, you would definitely want to probably call your doctor and get checked up before you return to your activity. Um, and that's just what I said about calling the doctor. And if there is a change in your status, again, if you get weaker or something happens, you can certainly get a consult for physical or occupational therapy and they can design a program that's appropriate for you. And I just wanted to list some resources here. We have this as a handout and will be available on the break, but you can look at these resources for further or additional information. And thank you for having us today.